Welcome back to day 3 of our 90 days data analytics training. I hope you are enjoying the class. I don't want this class to be boring because we have like 87 days to go. So we don't want it to be boring. Let's keep the energy high and let's keep learning. So in this series, we are just going to talk about the data analysis process. Like I said at the end of the day 2 challenge, I said that as a data analyst, they are, to work on a project, a data analysis project, there are a series of steps that we go through, right? And that is what we are going to discuss. So you don't get confused when you get on the job and you are wondering, what am I supposed to do first? What am I supposed to do second? I don't want that to be any of my students' problem. So talking about the data analysis process is a structured step-by-step -step guide to solving problems using data, right? We want to have a structure, all right? So that when we want to solve a problem, we'll follow the structure, more like a pattern, we'll follow it. This is what I'm supposed to do first. This is what I'm supposed to do second. So we want to have a laid out structure, right? To solve problem using data. So what does this data analysis process help you with? It helps you stay focused. Now you know that, okay, after step one, I'm going to step two. So you stay focused, you stay efficient, and you deliver real impact, all right? And today we are going to break down each stage. So let's get straight into it. So the first data analysis process that we'll be talking about is the ACK space. ACK, all right? So before you start any project or any data analysis project, there has to be a problem you want to solve. Whether it's your stakeholders giving you the problem or you want to identify the problem yourself, right? So there has to be problem. So that's where the ask space come into play. So in the ask space, you define the problem clearly. Now, what are we trying to do? What is the problem we are trying to solve? Define this problem clearly. Then what, what question, if your stakeholder is asking you a question, try to understand the question your stakeholder is asking you, right? By asking yourself that, what question are you trying to answer? You have to understand the question they are asking you for you to be able to answer it. You don't want to have a mix-up. Maybe they're asking you for A and you're now answering Z. It's going to make you look funny. Like, you're going to sound funny during your presentation if you are answering what they did not ask you. So this ask phase is the part where you define the problem. You try to understand the question you are trying to answer. You try to get to know your stakeholder. Who are the stakeholders? What, what is the answer they are looking for you understand and you also try to understand what their goals or pain points are i mean your stakeholder and stakeholder is just like the person you're basically working with stakeholder could be um your boss your direct boss if you're working in a team let's say we want to build a product right and you're working with software engineers you're working with back-end developers your stakeholders could be the team the board of team members do you understand so these are stakeholders so you have to understand who they are so if i'm working with teams now we are building a product i already know okay these are my stakeholders we have to work hands in hand to understand what is going on what is the problem we are trying to solve and basically all of that so you have to understand their goals. The product you guys are trying to build in your team, what is the goal of that product? You have to understand it to be able to know how you are going to solve problem with the data they ask you to use. You understand? So these are some of the things you brainstorm in the ask space. You want to understand the whole concept so you don't end up finishing the project and realizing that you did nothing. You didn't. Because now I'm asking you what is food. You are telling me I danced yesterday. You did not answer my question, right? That doesn't make sense to me, the stakeholder that asked you a question. So if it doesn't make sense to the stakeholder, if you're not answering their question, then it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense at all. So sometimes when you are doing your analysis, you might think, oh, this is also important. If it is also important, set it aside. Keep it somewhere. Focus on what they asked you. That's your major business. What they asked you is your major business. So don't digress, right? Give them what they want to hear. After you give them what they want to hear, you can now say, oh, you can now pitch in the one that you feel like they also need. You understand? So these are some of the things you do in the ad space. You try to understand it clearly and 
how the business question is going to go so an example of the ad space is a stakeholder asking you let's say i have i have a business and i'm asking you as the data analyst why are product sales dropping in the north region so i've noticed that product sales are dropping in the north region and i'm asking you as my data analyst why why is this happening so this is the ad space you try to understand what they're asking you now i know that my stakeholder is interested in why the product sales dropped in the north region so they are not interested in why it's dropped in south region they are not interested in why it dropped in west region they are particularly interested in north region so you don't go ahead to tell them that oh in the south region the sales dropped because nobody asked you they are basically asking you for the north region that is what they are interested in right so you try to understand the business question and that is what the ad space is basically about so after you understand the business question the next thing you want to do is we go to the prepare phase in the prepare phase what do we do now my stakeholder asked me this question why are product sales dropping in the north region if i don't have the data to work with how will i know i'm not a magician obviously so the next thing you want to do is gather the right data it could be okay for example my stakeholder will have their own database that they work in so i want to have access to the database so i'll be able to do i'll be able to answer their business question from the data provided right and sometimes it's not every time you want to work on a project that you'll be provided with data sometimes they ask you to go get secondary data you remember when we talked about the sources of data yeah they ask you to go get secondary data to work on the analysis right so in the prepare phase you gather the right data to that will answer that business question that you were asked in the ask phase which is the first one now you identify the data sources for example if you're working with a secondary data source you want to go to websites like data.gov all right you want to go to cargo.com you can go to if you're working on healthcare data you can go to nhs data so there are lots of data platform depending on the kind of project you're working on right but on cargo and on on cargo specifically you're going to get different data topics that you want to work on right there all right so another thing you have to do in the prepare phase is to check if the data is relevant right that is still what i'm emphasizing on they are not they're asking you a don't answer z don't answer d give them the a the a they ask you is what you should return an answer to so you want to make sure that the data is relevant to the business question you were asked so you want to make sure that the data set is also complete and it is accessible right so the key task here is you want to collect the data you want to combine and structure the data for analysis that is what the prepare phase is about you are just like you are preparing to do something right so that is what it is about so let's move on to the next phase which is the process phase in the process phase what do you do after you have your data set first thing let's recap before we move too fast first thing you're doing in the ask phase is to ask the right question try to understand the problem you are trying to solve right then you move to the prepare phase gather the relevant data that you need to solve that problem then you now move to the process phase where you clean your data we need to clean our data cleaning the data is very important and i'm saying clean the data i know you are wondering what are we cleaning what what is cleaning the data so cleaning the data is just like when we have data sets sometimes we have missing values we have duplicate data okay let me give you an instance I have a fashion brand called Unique Excel, and my fashion brand, I employed a data analyst, and I asked the data analyst that, please give me, um, let me know how many loyal customers we have, how many customers purchased more than five times from us in the first quarter of the year, you understand, like from January to March, how many customers have repeatedly purchased five times from us, I want to give them a gift, all right? So my data analyst goes into my database, gets customers that have purchased more than five times from us. In the data set, the actual number is five customers purchased more than five times from us. But the data analyst told me eight people purchased more than five times from us. Basically because the data analyst did not do the data cleaning, right? So cleaning the data means that you want to remove irregular patterns, you want to remove inconsistency, you want to check for inconsistency in the data. And some of the things we do when we want to clean our data is to remove duplicates, we want to fix errors, we want to undo missing values. 
these are just some of the things we are still going to see in the practical class where we start working on with the software tools right but i just want you to have an idea so the next thing you want to make sure that you remove duplicate you remove inconsistency in your data set right and also we have something we call data types which is the next thing we discussed in day four right so these data types you want to check if it is correctly formatted right and you can create a new column if it is needed you have to understand that dirty data equals to wrong insights if your data is incorrect the analysis your entire analysis will be incorrect right and your little mistake can cost the company millions right so you want to make sure that you take this process phase very 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 seriously you need to take it seriously because imagine that you analyze data and because the data sets um you made you did not clean it there were duplicates in the data the total amount was like 100k 100,000 and you included your analysis now shows it is 1 million that would cost the business a lot right and and you just have to be very careful and take this process phase seriously to be a very great data analyst, right? So let's move to the next phase. In the next phase, we have analyze phase. This is where the actual data analysis happens, right? You see that when we started this, when we want to start a project, we did not just jump to data analysis, start creating dashboard. That is not what you start with. So these are some of the process. Understanding this process now will give you a structure just like i said earlier right so you know where you are starting from you know what next what next what next and like that you are consistent with your structure so for the analyze phase this is where we explore trends pattern this is where we ask uh, um this is where we answer the actual business question that we were asked in the ask phase so you remember the ask phase they asked us that why are product sales dropping in the north region so you can use Excel, you can use SQL to answer the business question, basically. So the analysis, that is what it's about. You identify trend, patterns, relationship, and so on. So an example um, from the ask phase that we have that is asking us why sales dropped in the North region. After analyzing the data, then you, you may figure out from the data sets that sales dropped in the North region because three top performing products were out of stock. So the sales job, because the products people are buying more in the North region, is not available for them to buy. And you got to know that from analyzing the data set, you understand. So I hope it makes more sense now. So this is the kind of insight you can gain from your analysis. So after you discover it, when you analyze the data, then you can put it into like a graph or a dashboard that you now present to the stakeholders. So after you are done analyzing and you yourself, you've gained insight into the analysis. You know, we are not doing the analysis because of you. <laughs> we are doing it because of the stakeholders. So that means we have to proceed to share it with the stakeholder. And that takes us to the next data analysis process, which is the share phase, right? So in the share phase, you communicate your findings clearly, right? So you already discovered that sales dropped because three top performing products were out of stock. So you have to communicate this. That's why soft skill is as important as technical skills, all right? And in case you don't know what soft skill or technical skill is, soft skills are like communication, critical thinking, problem solving. Those are soft skills. And um, technical skills are the Excel, Power BI, Tableau, SQL that you want to learn. These are like the software tools you need, all right? So both work hand in hand because now you've analyzed the data. Technically, you've used the software to analyze the data. You now need your soft skills, which is one of it is the communication. You need it to now explain your findings to the stakeholder. And you know that is another thing for you to know something. It's another thing for you to be able to explain it. If you know something, but you can't explain it, does it still make sense? It doesn't really make sense because the stakeholder asks, asks you a business question that they are expecting an answer to. And now you don't know how to answer their question, even though you know the answer. So that's why you have to work on your communication skills as a data analyst right so you have to communicate in the share phase you communicate your findings clearly you can use dashboard we use dashboard power bi or tableau or reports you can create slides you can use canva powerpoints pdfs to create your slides and you have to tell a story that makes sense to stakeholder so in the share phase when you want to share 
the insights you gain from the data you have to tell it in a storytelling format and you don't have to worry we are going to discuss all of this remember we are still in the peripheral stage so let's take it slow so um you have to note that your visual should answer questions without needing long explanations you understand so once you present your dashboard by them just looking at your dashboard they should have an idea of what the insight is like like without you doing long explanations all right and if you don't know what a dashboard looks like i'm going to show you just relax okay so um another thing we have the last step of the data analysis process is the ask phase all right so in the ask phase right what you do is you recommend actions based on insights so based on the insights you've gained from the analysis you are going to recommend actions as a data analyst you are not just analyzing data you are solving problem after you now solve the problem you now suggest recommendation we call it recommendations like okay this is what you should do to improve this this is what we should do to make this better you understand so this is the ask phase so this is basically what you do in the act phase. You recommend actions based on insights. You collaborate with stakeholders to implement the solutions. And you track results and revisit the data if needed. You also have to track results to see if we are on track as a team, right? So example is, um, you know, the insights we gain from the analysis is that sales job because three top performing products were out of stock. So an example of recommendations we can give to the stakeholder is, they should restock top products weekly so that we don't run out of it. And also, they should improve their warehouse tracking. So the warehouse should track what is going out, what is coming in. So it's not that the products will finish before we now see that it has finished. They have to be able to track it to know that, okay, this is about to finish. We should have like a restock level. So before it finishes, we already restocked it. And by that, we will not have um, low sales in the North region. You see, this really makes sense. With this that we just said, we answered the stakeholders' business question. Not only did we answer the business question, we also provided solution, like recommendations that, okay, to solve this problem, we've realized that it's because the top three products are not available for people to buy. Now, how do we now solve this problem? We should restock the top products weekly and we should re improve warehouse tracking. And now we've just solved a business question but we've not used the software tools remember so we are still going to get there so this is the data analysis process and i hope you find it as interesting as i did okay so let's go to the conclusion now i want you to go back now recap the six steps that we just talked about the ask prepare process analyze share and act those are the six phases that we just talked about read more about it try to digest it, understand it. And then um, I want you to think about which of the steps you find most important and let me know in the comment section, okay? And let's prepare for day four. In the next series, which is day four, we are going to be talking about data types. We need to understand, there's something we call data types when we want to analyze data. We really need to understand what data types is really about. And that's what we'll talk about in day four. And remember, you can also join a community. You can join live classes, mentorship programs. By checking the link in the description, you can join the paid community. Thank you for joining and I'll see you tomorrow.